Okay, I think we've got um, I think we've got function templates all sorted out. Now, um, most people will usually see these template things in the form of class templates rather than function templates. But you know, we're halfway there. So again, once again, we'll do the usual. Uh, we're going to need to get rid of uh, most of this. So let's just start again. Get rid of this. Okay, so we're going to do um, a class template. Now, th you just have to accept that these things are good. Um, we haven't really covered very many data types, which are very complicated. And, and the ones we have covered, doubles and floats and ints and longs, can be dealt with by C++ in a fairly easy way. So you just have to pretend for the moment that um, we can't deal with different um, data types. So what we need are templates to be able to switch between data types. So let's let's do a simple class. We'll do a, we'll do a class which um, takes two swap rates, compares them, and then gives you a spread between those two different swap rates. So we're going to put two different percentage swap rates in, and we're going to get a spread out for our profit margin. So first thing we need to do is template class. Now uh, I'm, I'll stick to the official way of doing this, which is the kind of way that I won't get shot for, which is to use T. Um, we can change this later, something that makes a bit more sense. Okay, class, uh, swap spread, so just like, you know, a normal class, with a public, you know, all the usual stuff. Um, I'm going to have one constructor. It's going to take uh, a T, whatever that is. That could be a double, it could be a flow, it could be an int, it could be a long. We'll find out later, or something more funky. We'll also have a function which returns the spread between these two swap rates. So this one swap rate might come in 8%, the other one comes at 7%. This function will return a spread of 1%. Now it's going to return a type T, and it will return difference between those two rates. We need two private variables, don't we? So, private. And the first one is going to be swap rate in. And the second one is going to be swap rate out. Now, if this is confusing you so far, just very quickly, we'll show you what this would normally look like with a typical class. With a typical class, this would look like this. This would be double, double. This would return a double. And these would be doubles. Actually, what we might do, we might do this whole thing as, uh, as a normal class taking doubles and then show you how to turn it into a template. That might be a better way of doing this. So let's do that while we're here. Okay, so we need, uh, we need the constructor. So we are going to turn this into a template later, but maybe it's a good idea to show you how to do this uh, the old-fashioned way with just one data type. And then we'll show you how to convert it. So it's going to be a double. And then it's going to be a double. This is a very simple constructor. It's just, we're not going to use a set and a get. We'll just use this as simple things. So we're going to set that value, swap rate in, equal to swap in. And we'll set this value. Let's get rid of this stuff down the bottom. We'll set this value equal to swap out. Okay, and then return. Oh, we don't need to return, do we? But um, let's not worry too much about that. Okay, we need this other function as well. So let's do that then. So this is going to be the spread rate function. So we need to say which class are we in? We're in the swap spread class. And where is it? Spread rate. There we go. Super. Um, oh yes, we need to say what it's going to return. It's going to return a, a double. And all it's going to do, it's going to return the absolute difference, modulus of difference, 
between those two swap routes, which we have accessible via these uh, object uh, parameter variables. So it's going to be the swap rate in, take away the swap rate out. And that should um, give us a nice absolute. So it doesn't matter if this is eight and this is seven or this is seven and this is eight. We're gonna get a 1% spread. Oh, what's wrong with that? Ambiguous, yeah. What we need is we need to include, oops. We need to include the CMath library, which has some better absolute functions in it than the, than the normal, there we go, than the normal library. Okay, I think we've got everything we need now for this. So just a very simple class, which is gonna take, have two um, things as data elements, and then just give you a difference between the two, nice and simple. So we'll have uh, int main, um, we'll set up an object, swap spread, um, this is just, we'll call it, I don't know, something funky, swap s, let's put two rates in, 7.42 and 7.54, should come back with a difference of 0.12, we hope. So now we'll just output what the difference is between those, swap spread is equal to swap s dot and then the spread rate where is it there it is spread rate method and that's it you know nothing nothing hairy and return zero to the operating system lovely let's give that a run 0 0.2 fantastic so that's what we'd have done in the old days uh, with these two double characters. Let's actually, what we'll do is we'll just say uh, double first swap rate is equal to 7.42 and second swap rate is equal to 7.54 and a double answer so spread is equal to 0, 0.0 and what we'll say is that spread is equal to this funky fellow here and then we'll just stick in spread in there it's just so we can show you what kind of things we're up to hopefully that'll work lovely jubbly okay now what's the problem Unused variable. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so let's put that in there. And put that in there. Obviously, we'll be getting these from a database or keyed entry or whatever, rather than just hard coding. So there we are. We put in two doubles in, which is matching the doubles constructor. And we're getting back a double. And printing it out fantastic now this will actually work with floats and things but Im imagine there was a data type we wanted to change this to which wasn't double now this will unfortunately work C++ is a bit more flexible these days there we are but imagine we couldn't use float with this with this class to get out an answer imagine we put some data type in there I know, float, float Japanese. And float Japanese couldn't go into swap spread, it just couldn't cope with it for doing yen transactions. Well, what we'd have to do is we'd have to copy all of this code and copy it out again and, and, and put constructors in which can cope with float Japanese and, and put float Japanese private variables in there and float Japanese other functions and it would get really messy really quickly. So we don't have to do it like that though. What we can do is we can use a template and at the last moment, as we send in our data variables, C++ will work out and go from the template and figure out what to do. So let's turn this class into a template class and see how, it, how we can make this work. Okay, first thing you've got to remember, every little bit of block of code typically will pick up 
this notation. Template class T. Um, and every time we see the class that we're going to replace later on the fly, we have to stick a T. Well, you can have ints in there and things. You could even put double in there. But anything that we want to be flexible, we, according to what is used to construct this object, we change to a T. So that's the first part. So we have to stick that there. And then everything we want to be flexible, we change to T. Now, the next one, again, even though it's swap spread, and even though we know that swap spread came with this in front of it, we still have to type this every single time we do a new little block of code. And here's a weird thing, which I've never really liked. It confused the heck out of me when I first saw it. And not only do we have to do this before every little block of code to do with swap spread, we also have to say just here what kind of a thing it is that we're about to um what kind of a thing it is that we're about to um change to say double if dub two doubles came in uh, it's a bit of a weird notation you just have to believe me you can't do it without it if we try and do it without it it won't work you've got to put that little thing in there and again we have to change that to a t and that to a t and that's because it's figuring out that these things here are T's. So if we have those things as T's and these things come in, they must be something, you know, that's T-ish. Okay, so we're okay now with that function. Uh, second function, we ha unfortunately, we have to do the same thing again. We have to do template class T. Um, we have to say that that's a T. And we have to also say that this is a construction of the swap spread template. Remember, this could be many. It could be many swap spreads created. There could be a swap spread created for double. There could be a swap spread created for float Japanese. There could be a swap spread created for, I don't know, Chinese toast. I don't know. There could be hundreds of these things. So we, we have to tell C++ what it is we're doing. And I don't think this is necessary. You know, this kind of tells me what I'm doing. But, you know... I'm just I'm just a messenger. So we have to put that in. You can see all the errors have gone. Now this still isn't going to work. Why not? Uh, because we also, and this again is a bit odd, but there we are. We also here have to say what kind of a swap spread we want to create. We want to create one with a type, sorry, not T this time. We want to create this with doubles let's just run this let's just change these numbers just to make sure it's working so 6.42 which would be 1.12 there we are super now why isn't this t why doesn't that work well what we're doing here is we're saying okay i want you to create me a swap spread but i want you to create me it with wherever there's a thing there put doubles in and what that's going to do is that's going to say okay we're creating this that's what they're after now I won't do it for all of them otherwise we'll be here all day but you might want to think of this as being a taxi class this is a taxi class T for taxi and here, you're saying to the taxi driver where you want to go and what you want to do. Where I want to go south of the river. So, C++ goes, ah, oh, they want to go south of the river. So what I'll do is I'll construct them a taxi. And wherever it says T, I'll put south of the river. So now I've got a sw south of the river swap spread um, um, class. So... All a bit confusing, I know, with this, these notations, but now it does work. And, and later on, we could put, you know, float Japanese in there. And it would work if there was such a data element. And wherever we get float Japan declared there, every T here will become float Japan, 
Look Japan, Look Japan, etc., etc., etc. So that's the whole idea there. But again, a very strange notation. Obviously, that's not going to work because it doesn't exist. But please create me a swap spread class object. I'm going to send in wherever there's a T. Please replace that with double. C++ will go, OK, wherever there's one of those, replace it with double. Put them all into these things here. And away we go. And every little block of code, every little class um, subroutine, we get this declaration again just to make sure. And also, we're about to send in some stuff which is T. Very strange notation, this bit, but we just got to put it in. In case you wonder what it is, it's just to say, well, that's where I want the double. I want to use doubles, so put double in there, put double in there. Same thing here. I'm going to be sending in a double, so this is going to be returning a double. So return a double, or a float Japanese, or whatever. And it should all work out nicely. If you don't like tea, put something else. You can put banana if you want. And for my first few classes when I did this, this is what I did. Because then it because banana's nonsensical. It doesn't mean, you know, anything at all. But if we go through this program and change everything to banana. That'll take a little bit of time. There's oops, banana there. Will that run? Have a look. Yeah, there we go. So to me, banana's better because it's meaningless. And it kind of says, well, wherever there's a banana, replace it with the double. So call it with the double. And then wherever you see banana, put double instead for the constructed class. However, if you use banana in real life, I'm afraid you are going to be laughed at. I won't laugh at you, but everybody else will with those little square glasses on so don't put banana do put you know tea yeah you might want to put you know template or you might want to put temp or something but if you want to avoid being laughed at in the cruel court of c plus plus universe then don't put banana otherwise things could get a bit tricky for you put it like that then everyone will think you're great so and let me just change the numbers again this is a nice profitable one 2.12 okay I think um, I think we're done we'll just a quick summary that before every element that wherever you want the flexible thing to be that before every element weirdly for every method that has to go in there too strangely I don't really fully understand that but if it doesn't work doesn't work if you don't same thing there and then when you construct a class say this is what I want the flexible thing to be I think we're there I'll see you next time